right, so uh, using advanced shape editing with floors and roofs. So let's go back to Reddit and let's take a look at what we got here. Let's, uh, let's go to our view. Let's uh, tab them, close and active, zoom extents, and let's uh, start. Let's start a new. Nah, we we don't have to start a new one. Let's just let's just create this 3D box a little bigger here. All right, so go to level one. Cancel out of there. Let's delete all this. Let's delete everything. It's a lot easier to delete everything from the 3D view sometimes. Let's just delete everything and tile our views, ZA, WT. All right, so we have a, a 3D view in our level one. No flat roof is ever really flat. Fortunately, there are tools that allow you to model tapered insulation over a flat roof in similar conditions to give the roof a small pitch. These wonderful tools are modifiers that are applicable to roofs and floors and will allow you to model concrete slabs with multiple slopes for sidewalks or roof assemblies with tapered insulation. The set of tools available for editing floor and roof shapes appears in the ribbon when you select a flat floor or roof. If the reset shape command is inactive, that means the selected element has not been modified with the shape editing tools. Let's look at what each element does. Modify sub-elements. This tool, let me show you where it is. If we're going to modify. We don't have a roof selected. So before we talk about them, let's draw in a roof. A wall, a wall, a wall, a wall, architecture, a roof, a roof by footprints. Uh, put it up to level three. And let's see here, um, define slope. We don't want it sloped. So we're gonna hit tab, hit that, make sure it's on the outer edge of the wall. And I think we should have a flat roof. Yes, we got a flat roof. Um, didn't ask us if we wanted the walls attached. So let's see if we can get them attached up there. Attached to top base. And there. And now we have them attached to the roof. We have this flat roof. So if we go to level three, turn off level one, we can see we have this flat roof if we turn on a wireframe or if we look which is view, uh, the base level is three, range top level underlay orientation, look down. Um, the underlay could be level one. And we'll see, even though we, uh, we select a roof, we can still see the underlying walls, even though, and we could select them, um, even though their uh, they're base level is level one. All right, so we have this, we have this roof, and as you can see, when you select it, um, within the context of selecting it, you'll notice the shape editing um, contextual toolbar opens up and we have mode, shape editing, and reset shape isn't um, the, available to us because we haven't uh, adjusted the shape or edited the shape yet. So, um, this set of tools is available for editing floor and roof shapes, uh, and it appears in the ribbon when you select a flat roof or, or a flat floor or a roof. And again, I reiterate, if the reset shape command is inactive, that means the selected element has not been modified with the shape editing tools. Let's look at what each tool does. Modify sub-elements. This, this tool allows you to directly edit element geometry by selecting and modifying points and edges. If you do not create any additional points or split lines, before activating this tool, the object's outer edge, edges and corners will be available for editing. If you do not create any additional points or split lines before activating this tool, the outer edges and corners will be available for editing. Now, let's read what the tooltip says. Manipulates points and edges on a selected slab, or roof, or floor. To adjust the vertical offset between the vertices and the original top face of the slab, change the elevation value on the options bar. Ah, okay, let's, let's do that one. So we go here, we have a basic roof, change the uh, offset level, they said, right? 
modify sub elements elevation three years again change the elevation value on the options bar okay well um, we if you haven't if you generate any additional points or split lines before activating this tool the objects four objects outer edges and corners will be available for editing okay well, outer edges, if I select that one, and I give this one a negative 10 inches, it pitched down. You can see it actually pitched down. And if I select this one, and I give this a, a, a negative 36 inches, Let's look at this from the uh, from the right. As you can see, it pitched down. This pitched down 10. Now pitched down 36. So, if I was to come back over here and select this edge and give this one a uh, a three foot positive, you'll see that one went up three feet. If I select this one, and I went five feet. Well, now we have this funky roof. And if we, uh, if we hover around, you can see it's irregularly pitched. Right? All right, so that's the Modify Sub-Elements tool. Directly edit element geometry by selecting Modify Points and edges. Well, we can still grab this point. That point's six foot one. If I said this point was negative 10 feet, thickness of root may be slightly, slightly accurate due to extreme shape editing. Dimensions to this element and section and details may not accurately indicate the thickness. So I skewed the thickness. Anyway, so I'll hold it there. That's a point as opposed to an edge. All right, so add point. So let me uh, escape out of there and uh, let me edit undo all of that. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me get this back here. Let me just edit, modify slab edge. Okay, so I'll keep it back where it's nice and flat. All right, so the second one is add point. This tool allows you to add points on the top face of a roof or floor. Points can be added on edges or surfaces and can be modified after placement using the modified sub-elements tool. So if we wanted more than four points, we could select the roof and add a point. And we could add a point at the midpoint here, midpoint there, midpoint there, made point there, and then we could start to uh, modify sub-elements by changing the points. So if I was to change this one, and this is defining the slope, right? If I was to change this one to five feet, I was to change this one to five feet, you'll see now, if I was to change this one to five feet, thickness of the roof may be slightly off kilter, Change this one to five feet. Well, now if we look at this in uh, 3D, make this a little bigger, we have changed the uh, pitch by selecting just those, uh, these midpoints. And now we have a flat roof with four pitch sides, right? All right, so let me just undo out of that. Back to uh, this small box here. Okay. All right, so we go back to the flat roof now. Add split line. This tool allows you to sketch directly on top on the top face of the element, which adds vertices, so that hips and valleys can be created. 
when the elevations of the lines are modified using the modify sub elements tool. So yeah, we could just select the roof and we could add split lines. So if we wanted to split from here to here, you can see now, modify sub elements. So if I was to pick the ridge line and bring this up to five feet, well now we have a small, small pitch on either side, right? Small uh, pitch. <clears throat> and this goes above the cut plane, so that's why you're going to see that on level three. If we look this in uh, elevation, we'll see it goes above level three. If I was to move level three a little higher, you would see this uh, roof materialize. WT, ZA. If I was to move level three a little higher, you'll notice on the, on the uh, level three above us, the view above us, it's constrained to it, so I, I would have to unconstrain it. Um, but that's okay. Um, I could just change the cut. I could change the cut plane here if I wanted to, right? Change the view range, unlimited. Apply. Uh, well, anyway, you, you get the point. Uh, if you wanted to see the front of this, the top of this apex, uh, we would have to manipulate the, the the view because we're only seeing level three. Um, we could probably see from level four if we created one. I'm not going to get crazy about that. All right, so that's the uh, edge split line. Now pick supports. Let me undo that split tool. Instead of doing it one by one, why don't we come down there. Oops, I came down way too far. There we go. All right, so we have our flat roof again. Um, and we don't have our 3D view. We have our 3D view open. Okay, so now pick supports. This tool allows you to pick linear beams and walls in order to create new split edges and set the slope and or elevation of the floor or roof automatically. Once a floor or roof has been modified using any of these tools, the reset shape button will become active. You can use this tool to remove all modifications you apply to the selected floor or roof. Linear beams and walls. Well, if we were to go to level one, and we were to put a wall down the center. Actually, I'm going to do it a little goofy. I'm going to do it this way. Let's try walls first. So now if we go to the uh, WCZA window, pile windows, and then zoom extents, if we go to level three, um, undelay orientation, uh, level one. Now we get in level three, we get to see the walls in level one. So now, if we select a roof and we were to pick supports, let's see. Pick a beam to define a new support for the slabs. A split line will create will be created on the slab based on the elevation of the pick. Well, allow us to select walls. But then again, this is on level one. On level one. Right? These walls actually go up to dormer level two. So if I was to, if I was to select, let's try this. If I was to tab select and then top constraint would be level three. Let's see if I could select walls then. So I select the roof, pick supports. It only let me, it's only let me select beams. All right, so on the level three, I'm gonna create a structural beam. And we're in an architectural template. I'm gonna create a structural beam that's gonna go from that wall to this wall. I'm also gonna create another one that goes this way. Now we can't see it because we're in an architectural template for starters, right? And let's take a look at the height of these beams. Um, I think you have to put this on fine. There they are. All right, so there's the uh, structural beams. So now let's select the roof again, level three, pick supports. And sure enough, we can pick the supports, but not the wall. So you pick the supports, and notice how the roof basically changed. Let's go back here. 
the roof has points now that we could pick. Let's see what we could do with it and uh, modify sub elements. So now we could pick just that intersection of that beam and bring this one up to say four feet. The thickness of the roof may be compromised, but let's just take a look at it and see what it gave us. Well, now you can see how it, it really did um, utilize that pick point, raised it up five, four feet, and you can see how it created uh, slopes for all the whole, the rest of the roof. And that's the beauty of this. You're able to, uh, to modify these roofs uh, on the fly. So, once a floor or roof has been modified using any of these tools, the reset shape button will become active. You can use this tool to remove all modifications you apply to the selected floor uh, or roof. So, if we go back to the roof, select it, we could uh, reset the shape. And it's back down to uh, flat. All right, so that's a really uh, quick one. We got through that relatively easy. Um, but again, even though it seems easy, it, it sometimes becomes complicated, and then you'll have to figure it out. But uh, stick with me. We're, uh, we got a lot to get to, but uh, there's some more advanced shape editing with floors and roofs that we're going to get into. Uh, and then I, I highly suggest that you practice it. Go get a job in the industry. All right, so I'm going to stop this and uh, move on to the next uh, subject.